Good evening, everyone. I'm back with another movie review as part of Monster Mania 2. And I'm still going to stick with the topic of vampires since I've covered uh, <coughs> uh, Brides of Dracula in my last review. So now I'm going to review another vampire movie. Believe it or not, Hammer made so many different uh, movies that involved vampires. There was Vampire Circus, which was a very creepy and gory one. There was Twins of Evil, Lost for a Vampire, Countess, Dracula, but but then there's this one, actually, that kind of brings an interesting spin to the whole vampire genre. This one. This is Captain Cronus Vampire Hunter, and I'm going to admit this right now, this movie is actually grown on me. It's uh, I'm actually loving this. For, for a few reasons. One, I can't help to imagine is that the character of Captain Cronus is almost a, a similar archetype to Simon Belmont to uh, in uh, Castlevania, that's kind of saying something. Considering this came out in like 1972, think about that. And the you know the NES wasn't even around then, so I couldn't help to notice about that character. But other than that, the reason why this takes an interesting spin on the whole vampire genre is that okay, the plot is very very interesting. So, um, after a couple of cases of girls or victims being dead and finding that their life and their beauty are drained of them. I'm like, wait, beauty drained from a vampire? That's something. And of course, that's a pretty cool interesting spin. And we're not talking Twilight crap, none of that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. This is real, this is some serious stuff here, actually. So, um, when I heard and I saw that, I was like, wow, good lord, this is, this is really something. Um, <laughs> but what really put me over the edge, um, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, there's a one scene I couldn't believe happened. A girl gets mauled by a bat in broad daylight. I swear to God, I'm not kidding. You, got, um, you Watch for yourself. If you dare. <laughs> but anyway, I will say... The story's pretty darn cool, very, and uh, just, it's so developed, developed and written perfectly, actually. Um, the character of Captain Crow is um, amazing, actually. I really, really like him. He's played by a German actor, Horst Jansen. Um, uh, very good job, actually. He's like a blend of both, you know, a de a, a very good swordsman, a noble knight, a true gentleman, kind of, pretty cool kind of thing. I, I really like that. Like, But what made him cool was that he, he had, he wielded, he wielded two Swords, a red traditional sword and a katana, and of course that really got me thinking. Wait, so there's more to this character than than there is because, like, how you get that katana? Maybe from his travels, I don't know, something like that. But I did read was that they originally did have supposedly they were going to plan like a series of these, but um, it never happened. But they decided to like do it like like a cartoon thing in the in, the, in Hammer's magazines around that time actually. So you know, kind of continuing the theme of Captain Cronus actually. Um, uh, so pretty much as the plot goes, he's pretty much trying to investigate the cases of like who's doing all these killings actually, and um, he does a pretty good job actually. Um. Uh, uh, my one complaint about this was that he has an assistant, a hunchback assistant. It's a little cliche. I'm like, go word, man. Okay, that archetype's been beaten to death time and time again. Come on, you got you had Igor and Son of Frankenstein. You had um the hunchback assistant in freaking um uh, um you know Return of Frankenstein or Re Re Adventure Frankenstein, where it was. I'm like, come on, give it a rest already. Okay, so yeah, we really don't need that, but. But I, but, but I really liked how they gave um, Cronus's, um assistant some humanity and persona, actually, and not just, you know, yes, master, kind of thing. So that's definitely something that they will at least get away from. Um, the uh, female lead, in my opinion, of Carolyn Monroe, ho, 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 she is, she is one reason why she is one of the true hammer babes, actually. And, like, even though her acting can come off a little wooden sometimes, but she still rocked the look. I, she did a phenomenal job in this movie. Also, she's a Bond girl, actually. Um, uh, Spy who loved me. Look it up, actually. So, definitely something. And I will say, the movie gets very good as the movie goes along. Um... Especially the climax, it involves, um, you know, the the, the villain finally revealing their self, themselves in an epic swashbuckling battle, actually. So, yeah, um, that enough said there, okay? I don't want to give too much of the movie away. You really got to check it out, actually. You can definitely find this. It is available on DVD. Um, probably pick it up through Amazon, actually. Um, story's very good. Acting's, for, for the most part, is good. The story moves at a good pace. 
and uh, it's just something. It's a perfect blend of the vampire genre as well as I felt like there was a little bit of a western feel to to this actually. You can't think about that actually. So uh, definitely check it out. And I'm gonna give this move movie. You know what? Eight and a half out of ten. All right. So. That does it for this evening. Let me know what you think. Definitely check it out when you get a chance. And keep it tuned here for some more terrifying thrillers.